Hey guys, this is Abhishek from Gadgetstreet.com and today we are here at the Samsung event and Samsung has launched the first Tizen phone over there in India. As you can see, this is the Samsung Z1. This is running on the Tizen OS which is an OS owned by Samsung and they have a lot of things on this particular device. They have actually given a lot of application, a lot of multimedia application which you can consume. So you have a lot of options to download different kind of songs, videos. Again, all the content is targeted towards India and this is the first launch which has happened in India. They are going to launch further more devices in this particular series with the same Tizen OS. When we talk about the specification, this device has a 4-inch WVG display and it is a PLS display panel, which is again not IPS. Uh, the viewing angles are good. Again, I would not say that they are great, but pretty good, I would say, for a device which is priced only 5,700 rupees. So in terms of the pricing, it is a pretty good price they have given for this phone. And this is going to compete directly with Android One. So as you can see, when we compare this phone with Android One, in terms of specification, you may see that this phone has slightly less specification as compared to Android One, uh, a smaller display size as well. But in terms of the overall performance, the UI is very smooth. As per the information which we have got from Samsung, Tizen OS is kind of very responsive and smooth. And I have not no noticed any kind of lag on this device during my approximately 15 to 20 minutes of usage of this phone. So we are going to give you a complete overview of this phone and a quick review as well. We are going to tell you what all you get on this phone in terms of the price you will have to pay. You will have a 1.2 GHz dual core processor on this device, 4 inch of WVG display. Again, the resolution of the display is not much, but if you take a closer look, you will not see any pixelation on this device on the display front, which is very good. You do have option to control the visibility so that you can have better visibility in outdoors. So once you check this option over there outdoors, the display brightness will be increased and you can easily see this display even when you are using this phone in outdoor sunlight. Talk we have a 3.1 megapixel camera at the back which is a fixed focus camera and we have a fixed focus camera at the front as well which is a VGA camera. Talking about the rear we do have LED flash as well and we have the loudspeaker over there. This is how the plastic back cover look like. Again it is matte finish and looks very good. You do have this device available in other color options as well. This is the black color variant and we have the white color over there. You do get this device in other colors as well. We will show you that later. Talking about the connectivity and the ports we have a 3.5 audio jack on the top. On this side we have the volume rocker which is a plastic button but does give you decent amount of feedback. At the bottom we have the micro USB port for data syncing and charging and we have a primary microphone over there for voice calling. However, I'm not able to locate a secondary microphone on this device and we will confirm that later whether this device has that or not. We have a power and sleep key over there on this part. As far as edges are concerned, the edges are again made up of plastic but they have a very nice metallic look to it which does make this device look pretty premium I would say for the price you are paying for this phone. Talking about the front, we have the touch capacitor buttons over there which does have backlit LED and we have a physical home button which is a pretty good button which gives you good amount of feedback as well whenever you press it. We have a nice metallic earpiece over there and the front camera and the Samsung branding over there. Again this device have the dual branding so it is a dual SIM phone. Talking about the connectivity at the back side, let me just remove the back cover. Back cover is again made up of plastic which is kind of thin but not bad quality of plastic, it is decent quality of plastic they have used. They have the battery over there and the battery which is there inside is a 1500 mAh battery and with this much of battery and this much of display size, if the OS is actually optimized properly, you should be able to get around one day of battery backup and we will confirm that once we do the full review. Talking about the microSD card support, you do have support for microSD memory card and you, you can also expand the storage. Talking about the display front, you can see the display is good. One thing I'm not very happy about the display is that the display brightness is good but not great. Uh, it would have been better if it it was an IPS LCD display panel but it is a PLS display panel which does give you decent viewing angles I would say but the brightness is something which is kind of compromised to an extent but not completely but you can still see the display in outdoors by checking this option. Let's take a look over the software UI of this one and we will take a look over the complete UI the kind of UI it has and responsiveness as well. Let's take a look over the phone dialer first of all. So we have the phone dialer over there which is a simple phone dialer you can easily dial the number on the phone dialer whenever you would like to dial a number you do have the option of making a video call so you can make a cellular video call on this phone which is also a good thing. Talking about other specification let me just show you the notification center. Again the UI is very much inspired from the UI which we see on Android. So we have the toggles over there on the notification center. You can turn on the torch, you can toggle Wi-Fi, Bluetooth and mobile data as well. You can toggle. Let, let's go to settings and take a look what we have inside. So over here in the settings we can see that we have the power and storage information over there. We have the battery information 
automation which is 18% as of now and you do have ultra power saving mode supported as well so once you go to ultra power saving mode and once you enable this you will get much more battery backup on this device and you just need to agree this and you can see that it will give you around 1.4 days of battery backup which is very good even when 18% of battery is left on this phone once you enable the ultra power saving mode you will get 1.4 days of battery backup but the overall usage of the phone will be restricted you can use internet as well in the ultra power saving mode once you enable ultra power saving mode you will get around this much of battery backup and once you enable it the display brightness will be dimmed but again that is because it is saving a lot of power and you can use it for browsing internet you can so let's take a look over the internal details of the phone let's first of all take a look over about version when it comes to the tizen os which is running on this device it is tizen 2.3 and when we talk about the storage we have the information over there for the battery power cpu usage as well as you can see the cpu usage is right now zero or it will basically keep on keep on fluctuating let's take a look over the storage options and under the storage we can see that 54 percent of storage is there and uh, as per the current information which we have approximately uh, you will get approximately 2 GB to 2.16 GB yeah so it is 2.16 GB which is available on this device again this is pretty good and you do have support for SD card as well so in Talking about the RAM, this device has 768 MB of RAM. I would have liked if they have given a 1 GB of RAM on this device. But again, with this much amount of RAM, the device is responsive. And I do not see any lag on this device with initial use. Again, with normal day-to-day -day usage, that is something which we are going to tell you once we do the full review. But as of now, I do not see this device lagging, which is a good thing. Apart from this, when it comes to sensor, it has accelerometer sensor. It does not have magnetic field sensor, but GPS navigation can be done. And GPS navigation can be done without that sensor. We also already told you about the internal storage and how much of that is available. You can insert a micro SD memory card up to 64 GB. So it is not limited up to 32 GB. You can use a micro SD memory card up to 64 GB. In terms of the overall dimensions, it is a very handy phone. You can easily hold this phone in one hand and there is no problem in using this phone. It is also not very thin but not very thick because of the rounded edges over there. It will give you a very nice grip and it is also kind of light in terms of the weight. It is only 112 gram which is fairly light. For for a phone of this much of display size thickness is around 9.7 millimeter which is again not too thick and not too thin as well battery is 1500 milliampere hour which should be able to give you around one day battery backup although you also have power saving mode ultra power saving mode as well in case you would like to save more battery for multimedia, Samsung has included the Joybox on this phone, which includes some other application which are there inside this Joybox folder. You have Club Samsung, you have FM Radio, Hangama application, Next Gen TV, and Box TV. So with these two, you can actually watch TV online uh, without paying anything. And uh, subscription of these services is coming free for some months, and then you can actually uh, continue with that in case you would like to use these application. You also have free content coming from Hangama. You also have FM Radio as, as well, and you also have 12 months of free subscription for club samsung so you can actually enjoy multimedia content on this phone so just to give you a demonstration of live tv we have opened the next gen tv application and we are going to play live tv on this device and oh, live tv tap kari, live tv live tv okay so here we have the live tv option and let me just tap on it and now it is going to give you a, a live view of any new TV channel. For example, we have the Sony channel over there, which you can watch. You can also watch other channels as well. And again, it, this one is right now running on 3G. So in terms of 3G connectivity, this device seems to be pretty good. It can buffer the content pretty easily, pretty fast with a proper 3G connection. And this is how you can actually watch TV on the go on this device. Again, this will come for free for some months. And then later on, you can actually, uh, for three months, you will have you will have this thing for free and then later on you can actually pay the subscription charges for that you also have the option of watching other tv channels like colors ashtag and then you have sub tv b for you ibn7 and other channels as well some new channels are also included over there which includes india tv and then you have some new, uh, music channels as well like zoom and some other channels as well as you here we have the messaging application. On the messaging application, let me just give you an overview. How is the typing experience? When it comes to typing, you can easily type on this device. Although the keyboard keys are kind of small, but typing is not slow. You can easily type on this device without any issues, which is a very good thing. And when it comes to swipe to type, swipe to type is not supported. Any problem you which you might face on this device when it comes to typing is going to be these small keys on the keyboard, but you can always get rid of this problem by typing in the landscape mode. 
As far as the application drawer is concerned, you can open the application drawer by going to the home screen and then you can slide upward like this and you can see all the applications which are coming pre-installed. You have email application, you have a Tyvin store where you can actually go ahead and install other application. You also have the option to install Android application on this device once you install the open mobile application compatibility layer which you can go ahead and download from Tyvin store and then you can install Android applications as well. You do have YouTube applications, some Google applications are also coming pre-installed. You have a weather application, you can get weather updates. You also have some other application which are coming pre-installed which is News Hunt, Crick Info and some other application which you can use in day-to-day -day usage and WhatsApp is also there on this device. Again, it is powered with the open mobile ACL for Tyson because WhatsApp is not available as of now for the Tyson platform. So it is the Android application which is running on this phone and you can easily install other Android application once you have ACL for Tyson. So you just need to go to Tyson store and type ACL and then you will get this. And once you download this application, you can install more Android application on this device and most of them will be supported. So here we have the camera UI and now we are going to show you the camera performance from this phone. We have a 3.1 megapixel fixed focus camera at the back and I have my iPhone 6 over there and I'm going to take the photo of my iPhone 6. Again this one does not have autofocus but let's see how the overall color production which is going to be. So I've taken the photo from the rear camera and I can show you this photo right now. It is taking some time to basically show this photo. Let me just give it some time. Okay, so the photo is already there. And once we zoom in, you can see the photo has came out to be pretty decent, I would say, for a device like this. In terms of colors, it is not great. In terms of details, definitely it is a fixed focus camera, so don't expect much amount of details. And for this price, this camera is doing a pretty good job, I would say, in low light. I can see the object, I can see some colors over there, but it is, again, not a very clear photo. And when it comes to the front and the rear camera, it has an extra option which allows you to actually tap on this and you can actually resize this thing and once you have your face inside this box it will auto detect your face and take a photo and you can do it from the rear camera as well as from the front camera let me just do it from the front camera as of now and I'm going to take my photo so it will do the face detection it will start the timer and it will take the selfie. So this is how you don't need to press any button. You don't need to touch the screen to actually take a selfie. And this is how the front camera quality is. The front camera quality is again decent for low light. It is giving a pretty decent photo in this low light scenario which we have taken from this phone. Again, the front camera can do a pretty good job if you use it in daylight, if you have good amount of light falling on your subject. And when it comes to different kind of modes, you have a selfie mode, you also have a dream shot in which you can actually take the photo and apply different kind of filters and you can see different kind of frames can be applied. You can change the frames and you can have different kind of photos taken with these kind of filters. Again, it has face detection, so you don't need to basically touch it once you enable this option. So which is a very good thing. Let me just toggle back to the rear camera and show you the resolution at which you can record video. So when it comes to the rear camera, let me just first of all skip this. Okay, I have to change the mode. I have to go into the selfie mode and I have to then toggle the camera. So we have the rear camera mode over there and now let me just show you the setting for the same and when it comes to the video, the video resolution which is possible from the rear camera is 614 to 480. So 480p resolution videos can be recorded on this device and when it comes to front camera, the front camera is again a VG camera so don't expect much as far as resolution is concerned. Let me just show you that as well. So we have the front camera view over there and let me just show you the resolution for this as well. And when it comes to the front camera video size, the front camera can also record video at 480p which is a very good thing. We also have support for GPS navigation once you go over here and enable location and enable GPS you can use this device for GPS navigation even when it does not have magnetic field sensor you also have tethering supported so you can share the 3G internet by creating a portable Wi-Fi hotspot from the 3G SIM card which you can insert into this device you have support for Bluetooth tethering and USB tethering is also supported again apart from this we have the data usage counter over there as well so you can see how much of data you have consumed it will give you the complete information for a month or for a week whatever you would like to see you can actually see that and you have the mobile network settings over there you can change the mode from 3g to 2g only or 3g only and that is supported on this phone which is a very good thing and when it comes to display let me just show you the display settings so we have the brightness over there this much and if we increase the brightness the display does become kind of visible and i would say it is going to be better in terms of visibility in direct sunlight when you increase the brightness to full you do have auto rotate screen and screen time out as well and you also have the option of showing the battery percentage on the top of the device on the status bar which is possible so all in all this device looks like a pretty decent value for money again we are going to tell you more once we do the full review 
don't go ahead and buy this as of now but wait for the full review we will do the full review and we will test this device in day to day usage and scenarios and we will tell you whether it is actually a good device uh, when it comes to day to day usage for the sim card connectivity you just need to remove the back cover and you can remove the battery and then you can see there are two sim card slot which are two full size sim card slot you can also insert a full size sim card inside and you can also insert a micro sim like this so it is rightly designed in such a way that you can use both the two sim cards without using an adapter that's all from us as far as the quick hands on review of the Samsung Z1 which is the first Tizen phone which they have launched in India they are going to come with more phones in terms of specification it is not very impressive but in terms of the overall UI response it is kind of smooth enough the camera performance is also decent it is not a very high end phone again for the price it is justified the kind of specification it has but they could have given more uh, specification in terms of ram as well as in terms of storage which i was expecting so let's see what happens to the next device which comes in this series as of now uh, that's all from us do let us know if you have any specific question for this device we would love to help you you can like the video this video help you by clicking the like button below you can subscribe to our youtube video channel for more videos like this by clicking the subscribe button below thanks for watching this video this is abhishek Signing off. Thank you.